South Africa, the town of Bethlehem. This is the location where the first privately owned and operated hydroelectricity power plant in the country will be built. In the past, South Africa was confined to the idea that all electricity should actually come from coal. And uh, all electricity generation plants that has been built and constructed in South Africa was coal based. Um, and it has been done in the 1970s. So during the last 20, 30 years, no new electricity generation plants have been established. For a middle-income country, South Africa has very high carbon dioxide emissions. Electricity is not only produced in a dirty way, it's also very cheap, which makes it hard for clean electricity producers, such as small hydropower, to compete. However, a contribution from the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs helped the project developers of New Planet to overcome significant hurdles that the project faced as a first mover. Bethlehem Hydro will consist of two hydropower plants that will be built on separate locations along the Ass River. This project is, is small scale. It's about 7 megawatts in capacity. South Africa's got 40,000 megawatts of power generation capacity, 95% of which is, uh, is, is coal, uh, which gives us a very good CDM uh, climate change baseline. So uh, the benefits of the project is on, on uh, in terms of climate change is significant. We will be saving about 33,000 tons of CO2 uh, a year. Even though not the main objective, the project has other benefits besides the CO2 emission reductions. Two environmental benefits are the reduction of particulate matter, which will have positive health effects, and a reduction in water use. Just this little 7 megawatt plant will save water to the effect of 180 average households consumption per year. Next to the environmental benefits, there are a number of small social and economic benefits for the local community around Dishlabeng municipality that is buying the clean electricity. Bethlehem will utilize it, as I say, once the projects are kicking off. We will actually utilize the fact that it's green electricity to try and promote uh, industrialists or people that are interested in investing in Bethlehem mm. using that specific green electricity. The alternative spin-offs will be job creations. That's, uh, that's the main thing at this point in time. Uh, also, whether it's full-time employment or temporary employment, at least people will benefit. You've got uh, uh, unskilled, semi-skilled and skilled people. So what will actually happen is the skilled people will get the training, or semi-skilled people will get training to become skilled uh, mm -hmm. workers, and the unemployed will be trained. Considering the limited size of the project, these positive side effects will be relatively small. However, one other issue that first appeared to be a major problem for Bethlehem Hydro's development might prove to be its main achievement in the end. Namely, its struggle through the legislative and administrative systems of South Africa, which led to great delays in the project's startup phase. The project faced a lot of unexpected delays in its implementation. Um, mostly due to regulatory reasons. Initially we thought financing is going to be the big problem. Financing at the end, after you got the licenses, wasn't the, the big problem. The, 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 the licensing issues turned out to be quite complicated um, and unexpected. Uh, our water use license is, is the prime example that took us three years. Also for water affairs, uh, giving a license for long term for private sector uh, hydropower generation was to them something that they've got no experience in and they were quite uncertain about what the risk will involve. It has actually acted as a test case for a variety of legislation that has been passed during the 1990s and the early part of the century regarding water use as well as environmental legislation. It's now opened the door uh, to many more renewable energy and hydro projects coming off. Uh, we know of at least 12 projects in various stages of development in the country. So the footprint, so to speak, of the project goes well beyond the 7 megawatts that it is actually uh, its capacity and what it is going to generate. 
they just enabled us to sustain this process and to devote the resources. If we, if, if we were doing it entirely at risk, using our own money, for, for, to, to finance all the feasibility studies, to pay the lawyers, to draw up all these agreements, then uh, I think we would have given up. We're two months away from starting construction. Uh, construction will take about 12 months, so we're looking towards end of next year, uh, end of 2007, for commissioning of the plant. Um, and we're already looking at, at more projects.